Um, so what we have here is a robot bartender, and the robot is going to get drinks for people, um, one of two drinks that we have, and also pick up a goldfish snack. Does someone want to place the order? So we need a brave volunteer who can interact with the robot. <laughs> Welcome to the search phase planning lab. Please use the tablet to make your selection. So you can choose snack or no snack. We recommend a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the demo has less to it. <laughs> okay. I'll get you a Coke and a snack. Uh, this is how the robot views the world. So this is where the robot thinks it is. And this is all the furniture. Uh, that the robot has built before this using uh, its cameras. And you can see that this is the path that it's going to follow to get there. So it, it knows where the coke is, and uh, it knows how long its arms are, right? So it, it tries to figure out, hey, where can I park my base to be able to have a coke can in reach that I can bring back to the table? Uh, so we simply uh, compute a set of possible locations to drive to, and then we have a navigation planner that we have uh, that chooses one of them and then goes there, looks at the Coke shelf, and then deter determines if it's within reach, and then it, adju it adjusts its, its position if it's not within reach. So right now it's just getting to the Coke area, and then it's gonna use its camera to find the Coke cans and then readjust its, readjust its position. So you can see here, this is the table that it's going to pick up. You can see it's detected these two Coke cans already. So these are the two cans that it's found. <laughs> The whole table is made up of these dots. Uh, the robot views the entire world in terms of these little dots floating in space. So the sensor is like this camera here that's looking at the table with. These dots to the robot are obstacles. They're places where the robot can't go, or put its arm, in this case. So here it's uh, chosen to pick up this can, and it's come up with a plan to move its arm there, which is difficult. It has to come up with a way to move all of the joints in the arm, all seven of them, which we don't really think about. But the robot has to think through how all the joints move in a way to bring the arm around the table and get to the soda. And now it's going to bring the soda back to the side before moving on to get a snack. So you'll see then it will choose a spot that's near the snacks where it thinks, if I stand in that spot, I'll be able to reach a snack. So here's the spot that it chose. So also, um, I just want to point out that you know we have these two tables, right, in such odd locations. Why don't we just put all of the, the food across this wall, and then it could just drive easily from there to here without having to make all these odd motions, right, and uh, wiggle itself. So we put these tables here to simulate your homes. Uh, in your homes, you don't have like large spaces uh, where you know it would be easy for a robot to drive around. You know we. we live in, in messy areas where all of our stuff is all around, the robot would have to figure out how to navigate around it. So we do research uh, on these types of problems, real world problems, where there's a lot of clutter around and we have to figure out ways to motion flat around that for navigation and for manipulation. So here, this width here is actually like the, the width, uh, like maybe two inches greater than the entire width of the robot when it, when it has its arms in this tucked position. So our planners are able to uh, navigate safely from there to here without actually uh, knocking into anything. And it's a pretty complex problem. I got your snack. Yeah. So the next thing the robot's going to do is uh, come over to this table here to drop off the snacks. And this is the path that it's come up with. <laughs> And this is a pretty tight space. It has to, when it's uh, coming up with these plans, it has to come up with a plan that makes sure that the robot base doesn't collide, that none of the arms are going to hit anything. So now the next thing it's going to be doing is it's uh, turned the red light back on, and it's looking to find a, a flat surface, which there's quite a bit of, but it has to find a place where it thinks it can safely put the object down um, on a flat surface like a table, and it won't hit anything. And now it's generated a path that the arm's going to follow in order to get the Coke can to the spot that it's chosen. Here's your Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Coke 
milk is going to taste extra good. <laughs> <laughs> so that has to repeat the process for the next one. It'll move a little bit um, and look for a spot to put down the goldfish. In this case, the main thing is it has to put on flat surface and not put it on top of the coke. <laughs> 